me. I am very happy uh, to see you here. Um, my name is Anna, if you don't know, but, uh, and I work as a teaching assistant of fashion uh, at the Department of Foreign Languages and Literatures, uh, Literature, and um, I love my job with all my heart. Uh, I never knew that I would become a teacher, but um, when I tried, I realized that this is the only passion in my love that, and my life that I have, and I hope to continue even um, and grow even more in this field, and uh, you know, try to uh, transmit my passion for pedagogy, for language learning, for language teaching to others. That's the purpose. So, um, a little history, uh, a little bit of history. Uh, this presentation um, was actually not uh, made by me, but it was uh, made by the Russian professor. Her name is Irina Dubinina, and she is my guru in language pedagogy. Uh, she is one of the best Russian teachers in the US. And uh, she introduced us to the topic of gradual <laughs> release of responsibility. And then I just added uh, how to build and remove scaffolding in foreign language classroom. Well, as a language instructor, and a student who is studying pedagogy, we always hear this wonderful magical world uh, word scaffolding, right? And a lot of people are just like, yes, yeah, scaffold, scaffold, scaffold. And then whenever I ask people, so what is scaffolding? And they're like, well, it's just, you know, you, you built the um, steel or iron, you know, uh, structures around language learning, around uh, language uh, about language proficiency, and then, and then you're like, okay, how do you do that? How do you build that scaffolding? And then, whenever it's built, how do you remove it? And uh, this presentation, I don't think is going to um, open an eye for you, but at least it will be, I hope, very precise and um, maybe also very straightforward. Because when I was introduced to the strategy, I was yeah, I kind of know what it is, but when they introduced this to us, I was like, oh, this is how it works. So I'm going to um, incorporate my own examples of these strategies. It will be in Russian, but I'm going to explain you what it means. And so hopefully we will be able, by the end of the session, know exactly how to do it. have this fancy thing. Okay, so the general overview of this model. Uh, stage one uh, is teacher, I do. Stage two is collaborative work of teacher and students. And stage three is independent completion of the task. We're just gonna go forward because I'm going to talk of, uh, about each of them in particular time. Okay, so this is how the model looks uh, visually. Stage one, let's try to do it. Teacher, I do. So um, what is very important, whenever we come to classroom, um, we expect uh, students to learn right away. You know, we introduce them stuff and then we expect them to repeat it right away. We don't really wait. We don't provide them a, a much uh, input. They don't really have the opportunity to see us modeling the structure. So what is very important for the first stage is to provide so much input that students uh, really can make a hypothesis of how, of how the structure uh, in the focus works. So, uh, students understand why teachers uh, model the input. So, what is it? It is the goal of the, uh, of the lesson plan. So, it shouldn't be just, uh, you know, random modeling of something. It should be related to the goal that you showed them previously. Um, connection with learned material. So again, it cannot be just something that is introduced for the first time. They really have to know the knowledge of the concepts or at least it should be cognates. So students have to be familiar with new vocabulary, for instance. Um, meaning, I don't think we have to discuss it. It should be meaningful for students. The input should be comprehensible, so students should not feel overwhelmed with the extended vocabulary or, you know, with the 
new structures that, the, that they don't do, they don't know a clue about. And students are involved with process but produce minimum output at the first stage. So, for instance, uh, this is the this is how you would start a lesson plan. Uh, this is this is the uh, can do statement from Actful standard, and this is how you uh, can divide it. For instance, I can state my interest and leisure activities. I highly recommend you to provide examples so students will. Uh, will know what they will be actually doing after that and then I can ask others about their interests and activities by practice. Um, I'm not going to show all the presentation that I did in Russian for this particular goal, but I think I'm going to um, show you only this goal, how it is reached. And so, um, so students read it, they spend some time on it, and then what is very important, the first stage should not be started right away from the new material, but try to warm and warm them up. So what does it mean? It means pretend that this is not a language class. You know, have a seat and just, you know, ask them, so students, like, what do you like? What are your hobbies? What are your interests? And it's, uh, it makes students feel very confident and good and they understand that you don't really ask much from now, but they, you know, they, they kind of, um, they go into the process very slowly of learning. So basically, what it says here: your hobbies and interests. As you see, theater, kino, music, music, literature, literature, uh, photography, photography. All of these words, they have cognates in English. So they're easy for students to understand. This is the warm-up activity. Second, you introduce uh, a personage. For instance, this is Lisa, right? In my class, it's George. George is our language tutor. And students adore him, they love him. And so whenever I have anything with George, right, you, <laughs> students are like, George, George, George. It has to be connected to school, right? It has to be connected to the context. So I highly recommend you to choose a personage that will do uh, the structures in the language that they want to learn. So, and I'm introducing, this is Lisa. She's studying at the Russian school. Uh, in the morning, she has classes and other activities. In the evening, she, has, uh, she goes to clubs and uh, trainings. And then I'm asking you, hmm, what kind of clubs or what kind of other like extracurricular activities you have at UNF? So again, relation to the context. And then students are saying, oh, we have that, we have that, we have uh, this club, we have this club. Again, students are introduced, not introduced, but students are relating it to their context. Second. And then you introduce, okay, this is Lisa, right? This is Lisa. This is her interest and hobby. And then you just list them, right? Because you you introduced Lisa and you said, well, she loves tennis, badminton, uh, language, swimming, yoga, music, and photography. And next slide, you're asking, okay, Lisa, right? Tennis. What does she like? Lisa likes tennis. And you're like, hmm, great. You go to the next slide and you're asking uh, the question, what is she doing? And this is exactly uh, our goal of the class. You have to make sure that they know how to formulate this structure. So, Chimps and Yvites and Lisa, what is she doing? And then you putting Lisa's and Yemites at tennis. So you give an answer and here you emphasize it, what is changing, what is changing. Uh, then you do several of the same options. So you basically what you're doing, you provide a lot of input. So the students make a hypothesis about how this structure in focus is formulated. And, I mean, as a teacher, um, I can tell you, it takes a lot of time to do that. Because it's a lot of input, it's a lot of time for preparation, because it's a lot of slides, 
It's like one class can be 50 slides easily. But at the same time, you understand the value of it because students, they just get it. Uh, so you show them input, you see, you show how it works, so it's what Lisa likes. Lisa likes yoga, what does she do? She does yoga, what does she like? Uh, she likes music, what is she doing? She's doing music. Okay, what does she like? Pictures, she likes she likes making pictures, what does she do? She is uh, doing photography or pictures. Okay, so you provide a lot of inputs that students made in hypothesis. Then, uh, what are the common mistakes in this stage? Teachers, teachers have not established relevance for the task. So why this video, for instance? Uh, you know, a lot of time when you come to the language class, uh, teachers just show random videos or music clips or you know, something that does not have any relevance to the to the goals of the class. And you're like, uh, okay, but why did you show it to me? You know, it has to be relevant to the task. Why did you show this video? Too much information at that time. I did not uh, provide a lot of information because all I did, it was the pattern that was repetitive, right? So one, and another one and another. All I, all, all I did, I just uh, changed the words that had to be uh, declined. Okay, material cannot be considered otherwise. Um, so basically, what it means that uh, students cannot use it in the other situations. So that's why I had a lot of examples. Uh, teacher moved too quickly on the stage to uh, collaboration under teacher support. We're going to talk about it in a minute. But basically what it means, you have to give them time to make the hypothesis. And it's okay if it will take even 10 minutes, let them make the hypothesis. Because if they don't make the hypothesis, there's a really uh, small chance that they're going to comprehend this uh, structure. Stage number two, collaboration. So it's we do, and this stage has uh, two stages, it's 2A and 2B. The 2A stage is we do it guided, so do under teacher's support. And stage 2B is you do it in collaboration, so students work together without teacher. Stage 2A, uh, the purpose of this uh, stage, I mean substitute stage, is the students should try to use new knowledge in the atmosphere of reduced risk. And why I underline that? Because often um, we give students uh, tasks and uh, ask them to do it independently. And this is a big mistake because it has to be guided. I, I understand that it is really challenging to do it in the big classrooms, but maybe in this point you can turn them into groups and go and see how it works. Um, of course, I would prefer to teach 12 students rather than 25 in this case, so they get a lot of support from me. But if I don't, um, then we just have to be very fast and have a lot of control in this stage. So they really have to know that you are not next to them because you want to control them. That's a huge difference. But you are here to support them and to guide them. And so then students got all the pieces and begin to combine them. Okay, uh, so um, what, what is it about? The atmosphere of low risk, the, an opportunity to learn from mistakes, main point here. Uh, checking students' errors at the analysis of material. Monitor students' cognitive flow. So be a student yourself. When you teach students, be a student yourself. Imagine you are introduced to the new structure and you're like, okay, how would I learn this structure? You know, because we as language teachers, we're often, nah, it should work. You should not have the phrases in your teaching experiences, it should work. Try it on yourself first. See how the cognitive load goes from one pattern to another and then try. Okay, and so students should receive support at this point. Uh, teacher's role. So teacher is a guide, facilitator, actively interacts with students. A lot of feedback. Now for the whole group and individual. Again. Oh no, you do not. So it's uh, a lot of feedback for 
with the whole group and individual and don't be afraid to provide feedback, you know, uh, preferably in the target language. <laughs> And it's all attention to the structure and the focus. So it's not maybe so much about the meaning, but about the structure. So the form is very important in this in this stage. Uh, so what is very important at this stage? Very important. Foresee difficulties that can arise in the pattern. So possible mistakes, analytical failures. For instance, um, uh, you know, Russian grammar probably is not the easiest grammar to learn. And so we have a lot of exceptions. And so students, they often have questions. They do. Because, you know, they're trying to make the hypothesis. And then if they see that it doesn't work, they raise the question. So what is very important uh, is always to kind of give a little, like, sign. For instance, huh, a little moment. Like, money moment. So make sure you draw the attention to this pattern. So students, it's not about them not asking you questions, but it's about providing so much information that they are like, ah, oh, okay, I see why it works. So be very explicit in the PowerPoint. Always use different colors if you see, if you changing the pattern of the words, make their attention work in this case. Okay, uh, think about clues, hints, and questions for each assignment. So, for instance, uh, this is the stage 2A. So, what does Lisa like, right? And in this case, we work together with students, and I'm showing. Interest and hobbies, Lisa. And they, it's just, again, it's like a warming up, and they just tell me, tennis, she likes tennis, she likes badminton, badminton. Such a hard word to pronounce in English. Uh, language, uh, swimming, yoga, music, uh, photography, right? And then I'm like, okay, so she does all this stuff, right? But what is she doing, right? And then students under my control, I don't like word control, under my support, they are trying to decline all of these words into the right form, right? But again, it's done collaboratively with me. And then another activity, I'm like, okay, so Lisa does tennis, right? She does tennis. And here I provide other activities in Russia, and I'm like, and you, and me. And so here, I decline all the words so they feel fine with conjugating them. And then what they have to do, they have to ask each other the questions, you know, or for instance, play with their classmates. Again, under my support. They're like, hmm, чем yoga. So it's basically trying the hypothesis out. And, uh, there's always, uh, it should be always here, it says, you show anything else? So you always have to give students a room to choose whatever they know. You know, maybe they know more than that already. Okay, so common mistakes. Only one task for stage 2A. It's not enough. You know, language classes are um, structured that we have to be like very fast. You know, we have to go from one activity to another. Yes, but you have to give students time to practice things. And it's okay to have two or three assignments at one stage. It should be this way. Uh, so, did not perceive difficulties in the pattern or didn't think out a plan of how to work with these difficulties. And the support removed too early. So, what it means is like, you know, students are working and, you know, teachers are working. They're working, they're fine. No, they're not fine. You have to you have to go and see and how it works with each group, with each student, and help each of them individually too, if you have. Okay, uh, stage two B. Again, it's collaboration, but it's we do, we do, uh, students do. Uh, purpose: uh, students apply the knowledge gained at the previous stages in the new situations of the new content. Uh, what is it about? Attention to cognitive and metacognitive processes. Students need to cope with the task. So it's not about really 
you know, just performing the language, but rather performing a function already, because it's all about function. We should not teach our students to, you know, uh, repeat, memorize language. They should really use it in a functional way. What function does it does it does it does it bring to them? Okay, assignments should encourage students to work with language for a long time and with at least one partner. And uh, tasks are designed for collaboration, co-creation, and working pairs or triples, but teachers should stay a step back. Uh, it's, um, it's not about, you know, leaving the classroom or again sitting here. You just have to give them room for development, for, for learning, for engagement with language, trying to like, Still, you know, listen what they say, but, you know, rather walk in the middle and not just tell me, okay, team, tell me. <laughs> yeah, it's not like you, right? Because they have to try. They have to try. And it's okay if they make the same. They have to try. Okay, uh, teacher's role. Uh, teacher is the trainer, right? So intervene only if necessary. Like if you, I mean, if you, obviously see that, oh my god, this is a really bad mistake, like, I don't want students to practice this mistake, like, in the, in the, in, yeah, in the daily routine, because this is how he will remember, then you will probably approach and say, hey, uh, maybe a different way. Individual feedback, um, intonation, pronunciation, how to spell a word, attention, not only to the structure and the words. Okay, um, and this is, uh, the example of 2B structure. Uh, these are the dialogues, and uh, this is called mini dialogues, and they are very authentic. So it's 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 truly how people talk in Russia. So it's like, hey, are you in Middlebury? Yeah, I'm in the Russian school. Okay, and so what do you do there? Oh, I am. It's hard to translate in English, but I am doing language. Okay. Hey, good morning. I am going to the gym uh, to do some yoga. Where are you going? Oh, no, I'm not doing yoga at all. And then the third uh, conversation is like, hey, uh, what are you doing just right now? And I'm like, nothing at all. I'm just resting, right? These conversations are very um, natural and uh, we, we, we really use these parties a lot in, li in our lives, but also what is very important is the negation, the use of negation. You know, we tend to think that language should be taught only in the positive structures, like I do, I go, I learn, but we, we rarely use I don't do, I don't go, I'm not doing yoga, I don't do anything. Because actually, we ask, we answer that so often in English, in, in Russia. Like, what do you do? Nothing. Where are you going? Nowhere. You know, these are very important words, and we rarely use them in the language. And again, here I'm providing them um, uh, many examples of other words, and like uh, singing, theater, journalism, uh, reading. Uh, literature, volleyball, basketball, tennis, all other stuff. And so what they do in this stage, they just practice it together, and again, these are different contexts too. The structure is, the, 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 the structure in focus is the same, but the contexts are different. Okay, and uh, stage 2B, common mistakes. Uh, the assignment was not, was a repetition of what was done in the stage 2A. Um, it really has to be different. It can be repeated uh, from what we did before. The task was too easy. Uh, so it always has to be a little bit more challenging than even students expect. It's like one plus one. So it, it really has to go a little bit beyond their abilities. Uh, because, you know, some of them might be on the higher level and this is where they need to explore more. New material introduced, so you should not introduce new material at this stage at all. Uh, you can, but then you have to go back to 2A or even 1. 
if you're introducing new material, but you can introduce new material at this stage. And then the number of tips, questions, and support was not reduced. Okay. Um, <laughs> and stage one. So, teachers, stage two, uh, collaboration, and stage three, independent completion of the task. You do. Um, so, stage three uh, is independent, uh, and students uh, use new material uh, independently from the teacher, uh, but not from each other. Uh, there are a lot of individual differences in, the, uh, in their abilities and students' characteristics appear, of course. And students can work in pairs, but very important, assignments should not be joined at this point. So it's not a dialogue, it should be individual. You really have to assess students, what they do on the individual level. Um, stage three, teacher's role. So the teacher observes and actively listens. No hints and no corrections at this point. Um, and what, how you how you go to the first stage? You basically it, usually it is the end of the class, and uh, you always have to show them the goals, and then you have to have this word. Prove it to me. Like prove it to me. How do you do that? And then and then introduce the assignment or assign it as a homework. So for instance, what is it saying? My perfect partner, right? What is he interested in? What is he doing, right? My ideal partner, my perfect partner. As me, my perfect partner loves to do sport um, uh, as I do yoga and he does bodybuilding, right? In addition, he loves movie and he is interested in music. Both of us, we are interested in jazz. We do, oh my god, did I have it? Okay. We have sex every day. You know, I mean, students, it has to be authentic. Students, yes, I know, but we use it in Russia a lot, right? Not as sex as per se, but I'm just saying that we use this word in particular with sex. And so students have to know, that. otherwise if they will oh, like, yeah. they will, otherwise yeah. they will say, I do sex, which is completely wrong in Russia. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you have to teach them. Yeah. And, I mean, they love it. There's nothing <laughs> bad about it. And so then you basically ask the questions, who is your perfect partner, right? What does he do? Uh, what is he or she interested in, right? Common mistakes. The task is meaningless, inauthentic, and irrelevant. Again, stick to the goals. Always stick to the goals. The task does not match the goal of the lesson. Uh, you know, I mean, I had a lot of language classes in my life, and you know, sometimes I had the assignments for homework, and I'm like, okay, but how does it, how does it relate with what I just learned? Uh, students are not enough prepared for this assignment on their own, and this is a big part and it happens. Teachers, uh, teacher gives tips and leading questions and that, but they have to do it individually. And the teacher requires 100% of grammatical <laughs> accuracy. This is the most common mistakes that teachers are doing and therefore reducing students' self-efficacy, desire, passion to learn languages. We should not requires 100% of grammatical accuracy. They will reach this level, but let them try. Let them make the hypothesis. Genuine remarks. These are also very important. Not every lesson will have all three stages. So it's a big mistake that people think, oh, okay, uh, my class, I have to cover this, and then I have to split it into three stages. No, not necessarily. Sometimes it could even take week because some topics are very challenging. Stage one may be the text. So if you think that uh, this uh, model, gradual, not graduate release of responsibility, can be applied only at the beginner's level, no. It could be also applied at the advanced level of language learning, uh, uh, intermediate, and even superior. I don't know if we call it superior. Oh, advanced, superior. Um, 
the time at each stage will be different. So it can be, okay, 15 minutes here, 15 minutes here, 15 minutes here. No, it could be 30 minutes and then five minutes. It's okay. It's, it depends. Uh, the path to stage three is long. And we really have to remember about it. It's long. And especially for challenging languages like Russian. You know, for, for my students to, to learn the grammatical structure, it takes a lot of time to try it out. Um, the border between the stages is smooth and one passes into another. What it means, it means that, as I said previously, it does not have to be one, two, three, but it could be one, two, one, two, one, two, three. So uh, it's because sometimes, as, as you saw on my um, goals at the beginning of the class, we had two uh, two goals, right? And we just did one goal with you. But the second goal was again, we had to return to one, two a, and then two b, and then finish it in a third assignment. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I know, I did very fast, very professional. <laughs> uh, again, this is uh, this is not a perfect presentation, but uh, I hope it was uh, useful in some ways. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. <laughs> Thank you.